What's going on, traders? How we doing? And welcome to the SPACs attack. Let's do it. I got my man Chris Ketchy in the house. What's going on, everybody? Smash that like. Let's get it started. What's going on, man? Bringing the energy. I'm, see I'm seeing these numbers rocket on up. Let's go. Let's go. Tell everybody the SPAC attack is on, baby. What's going on, Chris? Oh, what's up, Mitch? Hey, four deals announced in the last uh, day and a half. How about that for uh, SPAC's attack? As you can tell, you know, one of the things we always like to do is give you the calendars, guys. If you guys would have been watching on Friday, you could probably know all these. So definitely, like always, guys, stay with us. Hit the like down below. Hit the subscribe, the bell. Like always, Chris is the brains to the show, so I'll let him go ahead and get into some headlines here. Let's go ahead and take us back, man. Yeah, so as I said, four deals announced in the last day and a half. So I don't want to spend too much time here on headline news because I do want to touch on all four of those announced deals. So headlines I have today, uh, Virgin Galactic, this is former SPAC trading as FPCE. So we told you in our calendar that their flight window opens beginning today, December 11th. Uh, so this is a major catalyst for the company and a major step to get to space tourism. So they tweeted this morning that their vehicles and flight crew are ready. Their flight window is open, but they will fly no earlier than Saturday. Uh, they have range clearance through the weekend and can extend into next week if necessary. So again, as I've said all week, Friday was the earliest they could do that flight. Um, but it looks like it's going to happen this weekend or into next week. So pay attention to a symbol SPCE is that is an event that could drive the price of shares, which are already up quite a bit over the last month. Uh, another favorite on the show here to talk about is Lordstown Motors, so symbol R-I-D-E. That company got initiated with a $31 price target today from Goldman Sachs in a buy rating. Shares are up double digits on that news. Also, always pay attention to Workhorse, WK. HS when we talk about Lordstown, as they do own a stake in Lordstown Motors and are, um, you know, kind of aligned with that company. And then we have symbol VLDR, so Velodyne LIDAR. This is a company we're going to talk about a little bit later on with those new deals. They did get a buy rating and a price target of $29 from Berenberg. Um, so again, seeing some analyst action on that name. Uh, and then, so symbols LAZR, QS, CIIC, and HCAC. So these are four SPACs we've talked about several times on the show. They all got mentioned by Jim Cramer on Mad Money. Um, they all got double digit pops the day after he mentioned them. Last night on his show, he took the opposite approach. He said, now it's time to sell. Um, so, you know, it looks like instead of uh, buy the rumor, uh, sell the news. It was uh, buy the Kramer and, uh, you know, now sell sell the, the rise in price after that. And then uh, symbol RMG. Uh, so this is a company that announced their merger with Romeo. They've now set a date of December 28th. Uh, BTIG initiated a buy rating on that company and a $40 price target. Then I want to dive into these new deals that were announced. Um, so the first one I have, so this one was announced this morning. So this is symbol CGRO. This is InnoViz Technologies that's going public via a merger uh, with Collective Growth Corporation. So this is the fourth LIDAR SPAC deal done now. The deal was done at an equity value of $1.4 billion. Their pipe included Magna International, a tier one automotive supplier and current investor. The new company will trade as INVZ on the NASDAQ. Current shareholders of Collective Growth will own 11% of the new company. The deal is expected to close in the first quarter of 2021. InnoViz is a global leader in LiDAR sensors with a focus on the consumer vehicle market. They say the consumer vehicle market makes up two thirds of the LiDAR total addressable market in the near term. InnoViz was the first company to win an OEM production contract for level three LIDAR. The company sees the L2 plus LIDAR market as the largest opportunity over the next five years. 
So current partners for InnoViz include Magna International, Aptiv, Samsung, SoftBank, and BMW. So four tier one companies there um, and that deal with uh, SoftBank as well. Revenue is expected to be $5 million in 2020. And then revenue will start growing triple digits annually beginning in 2021. So over the next five fiscal years, they see revenue of $9 million, $23 million, $79 million, $237 million, and $581 million, respectively. So InnoViz has global manufacturing capabilities and supply chain already in place. So then let's talk their competition. So we saw Luminar Technologies and Velodyne LiDAR already complete their SPAC mergers. Luminar shares trade over $30 and Velodyne shares are at nearly $20. And then Ava is going public via a merger with Interprivate Acquisition Corp. So those shares currently trade around $14, symbol IPV. So their presentation of the deal showed comparisons between the four companies. So they see revenue growing at 171% uh, on an annual basis from 2023 to 2025. Now that makes them the second highest for that revenue growth, trailing only AVA. But they do have the lowest gross profit margins listed of the four companies. The valuation of InnoViz va values it at 1.8 times EV divided by 2025 estimated revenue. So that compares to 14.5 for Luminar, 3.2 for AVA, and 5.2 for Velodyne. So again, so the looks like the revenue is going to be you know high compared to for growth compared to some of those rivals, but they do have the lowest gross profit margins. And then shareholders are only getting 11% of this new company. A lot of the recent deals we've seen, um, that equity has been more like 15 to 17%. So I was a little surprised to see the low amount there. Uh, Mitch, do you want to jump in? Anything on any of these uh, LIDAR companies? Let me add myself here. All right. Yeah, you know, one of the things I'm seeing is definitely uh, you got that rip up, a big volume day. And one of the things that I would look for is to see if we can come back and kind of hold this 18. Um, you know, it, it's pulled back towards this $19. I think it could keep keep even coming back down and maybe test this $18. I'll show you guys what I'm looking at right now. Um, so I'm seeing this kind of push on up towards 23. I'm seeing this pull back towards 19. I think you might get a test towards this resistance right here, which was back, in, back from the early October resistance. So look for that test for it to come back down in that area here. And then I'll be looking to get excited if you start seeing that pullback volume like you're seeing here. And then another another green spike once it gets that near that 18 and pushing back up there towards the 21. All right, guys, let's, I'll let Chris keep going as there's a lot of deals and a lot of things going on here. Go ahead, Chris. Let's go into the next one, an EV play. Yes, yeah, so the next deal that was announced. So we have symbol FIII. So electric delivery van company Electric Last Mile is set to go public with this SPAC of Forum Merger 3 Corporation. The deal values the company at $1.4 billion, so shareholders will own 17.6% of the new company. Electric Last Mile will trade under the ticker ELMS on the NASDAQ. So the Electric My Last Mile team includes the founder and chairman Jason Luo, who was previously the chairman and CEO of Ford Motor company's China division. The founder and CEO, James Taylor, worked for General Motors for over 30 years, holding roles of president of Cadillac and CEO of the Hummer brand. Taylor is also the former chairman and CEO of Workhorse Group. Electric Last Mile is set to launch the urban delivery van in the third quarter of 2021. So they say this could be the first electric class one commercial vehicle to come to market. Uh, it's going to have the same price point as gas vehicles and also have 20% more cargo space, which could make it very attractive to some of those delivery companies. They have over 30,000 pre-orders from customers, which includes leading brands and some of the largest fleet managers in the country. So those orders represent over a billion dollars in revenue. Customers include Walmart, FedEx, Ryder, Ikea, Penske, and Hertz. The company is using a former Hummer plant in Indiana, that has been retrofitted for electric vehicle production. They have first mover advantage in the last mile segment. That the North American e-commerce market has grown to $1 trillion and created a need for new low-cost class one vehicles, according to the company. 
So they see revenue of $122 million in fiscal 2021 and $613 million in fiscal 2022. They see revenue growing at an annual rate of 123% from 2021 to 2025, hitting a total of $3 billion by 2025. Units sold will grow from 4,000 to 83,000 by the year 2025. They're planning on also launching a class two, class three urban utility van in 2022, which would compete with Workhorse, Rivian, and Ford. In 2023, Electric Last Mile is planning on also launching a new vehicle for the China and European markets. So Mitch, what can you tell us about that chart there? All right, so one of the things that I'm seeing here is a nice pullback. Um, we're going to be looking for a move down into this like kind of 1250 area. Uh, definitely going to take a look at that, see see how it comes back down. Um, one of the things is the EV uh, sector is one of the sectors that definitely got hot this year. Um, and one of the things you need to see is kind of where the where the demand is really going to get me. I, I, it's always a, a kind of a supply and demand game. And I think this is going to be the first year you're going to see, is the demand ready to meet all these companies? I mean, it's not just one. It, it, it's, a, it's a lot of companies stepping into this area. And the question is, is there enough market share there for all these companies? You know, I personally don't think there's enough so that there's going to be winners and losers. And and how do you find that out? Uh, which one's going to be it? You got to start looking into the stories. You got to start looking in the fundamentals, see how their business deals are really going to go. Um, you, you see Chris mentioned a lot about their customers. That's also an important thing to know is who they're selling to and, and what orders do they have already ahead. Um, I think that's something that everyone needs to keep an eye out in these EVs. All right, I know we got one more to touch. I know it's a really popular stock, so I know Chris is going to go into this one. Let's go ahead and get into this one, and then we'll go into DM. I know a lot of people are talking about it in the chat. Wanted to let everyone know we do see it, so th th don't forget that we do see you guys in the chat. Um, like always, guys, put your tickets that you want to see. We'll get them on. And Chris, let us know a little bit about P TPGY. Yes, we got two more. So let me run through both of these quick here. So TPGY is bringing EV Box Group public. So this values the company at $1.4 billion. They're a European charging infrastructure play spread across 70 countries and 190,000 charging ports. So their goal is to expand operations globally with a focus on North America and Europe. The growth will come from North American expansion and growth in the software versus hardware market. So 2020 revenue is 70 million euros, and 2021, 120 million euros. Shares were up over 110% in after hours trading last night. We have spoke several times of the Biden administration plans for hundreds of thousands of charging stations. Switchback, which is bringing ChargePoint public, symbol SBE, has seen shares rise to around $40. Uh, I own shares of SBE because I believe in the charging infrastructure play here coming with the new administration. So that a company like this with North American expansion could make this company one to watch with that as a major catalyst. And then that last deal we had announced, so symbol GIK, this was announced last night. This is Lightning E-Motors going public via the SPAC Gig Capital 3. Full disclosure, I own shares of GIK. The company is the market share leader in the class three to seven EV market. They have a two year head start in the market and have 120 vehicles already on the road. They're the only company that has delivered class three, class four, class five, class six, and class seven electric vehicles. They have a 50% market share of the class three to six electric vehicle market in the year 2020. They have the broadest product line and hold the number one or number two market share position in every single class type they operate in. In 2020, the company shipped three times more vehicles than their largest competitor. They work with 30 fleets that together operate 500,000 vehicles. By 2025, they're planning to produce 20,000 medium duty commercial EVs a year. 
They have a strong line of sight to $2 billion in annual sales by 2025, with a billion of that already possible from existing fleet customers. Customers included in their presentation are Amazon, DHL, CBRE, Cox, and then partners are BorgWarner, Ford, Plug Power, and BP, who is also an investor in the company. They have a backlog of 1,500 vehicles currently. So along with vehicle sales, the thing that I like pointing out with this company is they have an energy as a service model called Lightning Energy that offers charging solutions with 10-year contracts and a patented mobile charging platform. They also have Lightning Capital, which is an EV as a service financing arm to help finance the vehicles. This provides a recurring revenue stream for the company. So again, not only are they you know, selling and retrofitting those EV medium duty uh, trucks and vans, they also have the charging infrastructure and they have the financing arm. So this is a complete package in that EV market for class three to six electric vehicles. What can you tell us about either of those charts, Mitch? I, you know, I was surprised about that 100% jump that we saw in that one that was announced last night. Yeah, you know, one of the things is uh, you're, you're always going to have to look out for when the bigger traders get in. Um, you know, one of the things I, I've noticed is that we're, we're starting to get this in, in kind of the bigger investors to really take a look at this. And you're seeing upgrades, downgrades and, and things like that. So you have to keep an eye on that because the the more that the institutional traders are getting in, um, the more we're going to actually have that underneath support. Um, I mentioned yesterday uh, a position by Chase Morgan, uh, Morgan Chase. Um, I, I know that. Uh, what, what was that? What was that stock again, Chris? That they got a a twenty three million uh, or something like that from yesterday. Oh, I don't remember which one we were talking about. Oh, uh, FDAC skill, right? Boom! That's it. That's the brains of the show, guys. There's so many stickers in back, man. Now it's hard to keep track of them all, even for me. Yeah. But one of the things that I'm really looking for is how is the trend going? Are we going to still be on this uprise where everyone's searching for SPACs? Everyone's looking for this asset class. What's the next play? What's the next one? It seems to me like it's already back to the Bitcoin phase and the cannabis phase. This is kind of how SPACs are. You know, We have the hype. So we have to definitely measure our risk and look to try to get into some of these plays to make some returns. But like always, do your research. Know what the company's about. Don't just try to buy into a stock that we mentioned. Like always, guys, we, we're trying to get you guys the information so that you can make your informed trades. All right, want to get some shout outs in the chat here. And definitely, if you're new to the show, say hello. Hit the like button. Let's go. Let's smash it up, guys. Smash, smash, smash. All right, guys, so I want to say hello to definitely Joel, uh, Mr. Brooks in the house, Caesar, Kev, Luke, Johan, always, Rule, Will, Jeannie. We got some new people in the house, so definitely hello to Robert out there, Luke, RR, definitely adding in, helping me out, telling me that I got the wrong stock, man. I got, I got to get it right sometimes, you know. It's, it, it, at the end of the day, um, there's definitely s some volatile puppies out there, Joel out there, and Chase No Chase here. L let's do it guys let's do it so super excited to have you guys all here definitely smash the like let's keep going let's keep growing and chris what's going on man what are we going to get into now let's let's, let's check out the watch list All right, guys, so let's go ahead and let's get into a little bit of our watch list here. One of the things I want to do is point out some of the big moving stocks as we have some moving. So uh, definitely, as you can see here, guys, right off the top, I mean, anytime you have a stock that's up 100%, I mean, <laughs> you already know. <laughs> we got some stocks moving then. So one of the things we, we can take a look at is if you look here, uh, let, let's take a look at Ride. I know we, have, we haven't talked about this stock too much. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in, in earlier, but I uh, want to take a look at these levels here technically wise. And, and this is so important, guys. You got to know your levels, man. I, I can't say it enough, guys. Look at this support right here. This was a resistance here that it broke out of. And look how it comes back down, guys. Look, look at this day right here. Boom. This, this, is, this is what you guys want to be trying to get. 
the levels, guys. I always talk about how, you know, it's pullbacks. It, you're, you're trying to get in near support so that you can risk right underneath it. Or you're you're trying to go ahead and, you know, sell into the rips. So that that's the, the best way I've seen to make profits in these SPACs is looking for selling into the rips, buying some pullbacks, and then looking to sell into the rip again. Um, and, and that's just for the pattern that I see out there. What do you think about this one, Chris? Hey, you know, I, I love seeing that upgrade that they got today or that initiation rather from Goldman Sachs and that price target. You know, it, it really puts some emphasis on believing in the story there. Um, you know, we've talked about that electric pickup truck that they have coming to market next year. Um, you know, I like that earlier this year they signed a uh, endorsement deal with uh, Joe Burrow. Um, quarterback of the Bengals. They're based in Ohio to bring in some brand awareness there. We've talked about them uh, getting some exposure from uh, Marcus Limonis, the host of The Profit on CNBC, you know, test driving those trucks. Um, you know, I, I like this story long term. If, you know, it looks like they have a chance to get first mover advantage bringing that electric uh, truck to the uh, market next year. Um, so I'll be real interested, you know, in this name. Uh, if you look at that chart, yeah, pullback. Um, but we are seeing that double-digit uh, move this morning. Yeah, one of the things I would mention is, you know, I, I, I've been a, a big uh, kind of bull in uh, Workhorse, which is very similar to the Ride because of that 10% stake. Uh, but w one of the things that I noticed is that, you know, with Workhorse getting that pushback of the U U.S. PS contract, um, you know, a lot of people were paying attention to that to see when Ride was really going to move because they were kind of moving hand in hand and they had that relationship. So one of the things I'm looking now is, is the relationship broken? Is Ride going to make a move up and Workhorse is going to stay down because of the U UPS contract? Those are things that I'm looking for, guys. Story is everything. And that's what all I can say about that. All right, guys, let's go ahead and Let's look at the watch. Let's see anything else we want to go ahead and mention. I know that there's one that everyone keeps talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and let's pull it up. Let's look at our desktop metal. I, I know you guys have been asking for it. So definitely smash the like. Let's go ahead and let's get into it. Uh, I'm going to pull up the chart first. Um, and then I'll let Chris kind of explain in the background what this stock does and where it came from, guys. All right. So one of the things first is first, guys, is always levels, right? So... You know, pullbacks are expected. You know, it's a stock doesn't just always go straight up to the moon. So a pullback doesn't necessarily mean that the stock is done. It just means that maybe it's gotten too extended too fast. And so one of the things that you can do to see the extensions is you can use a daily or maybe if the stock hasn't traded too often like this stock, I would use maybe an hourly chart. Okay, so what am I going to use on the hourly chart is I'm going to try to find some support. Where can this stock start holding? You know, this stock really ripped out um, kind of from this move right here, guys. We had this kind of like flag pattern and then it really ripped out from this $13, $14 area. And then we made a run all the way up to about $29.50. Um, and, and that's a huge run. That's why we say sometimes, you know, selling to the rip is, is going to be uh, a lot of the times is going to give you the profit because one of the things that I've been noticing in this market and one of the things you got to, guys got to be careful of is the volatility in the market is so high right now that it has waves like this. You get caught and then it comes down, you get caught and then it comes down. And so one of the things that I've been talking about with uh, certain investors and friends is to learn what works for you what profit percentage works for you when you're not feeling greedy um, a lot of traders get into this point where like let's say they're up 40 percent and then they start looking for 50 60 percent gainers and then the thing comes down all the way down to their entry and this is one thing as as a trader that i really don't want to be a part of because that that to me is more of a greed search for that return instead of understanding what your target is What's your plan in the trade? And always know your out plan. All right, Chris. So what, what can you say about desktop metals? And what does this stock consist of? Hey, so first off, uh, shout out to the chat and everyone viewing. I just saw us hit 100 likes on YouTube. And also a shout out. I saw a comment here from Brandon saying it's 6 a.m. in Hawaii, and he is tuned in to SPAC's attack. So shout out to Brandon watching from Hawaii. 
Um, so desktop metal guys. So this was Trine acquisition. Um, so yesterday, public debut, shares were down over 20% on day one. Now, remember this came as the leaders went on CNBC and they got that high visibility ringing the bell. So over the last 52 weeks, though, this is traded between 940 and 2542. Um, and now we have it down below 18. So this was one where the pipe was led by Chamath, uh, Palihaptia. So I like his tweet that he put out to first explain this company and why he got involved with it. So he said manufacturing is entering its 2.0 era where tools and machinery are replaced by printers. Materials and parts will create an ecosystem that can increasingly make anything. He called desktop metal the leader in this new era of manufacturing, and they already have deals in 60 countries. So the earlier boom in 3D printing kind of focused on the consumer side of things, right? Where, you know, people at home could make, you know, toys and little items. And now we're shifting to industrial. So now you're going to see auto companies, uh, aerospace companies, large manufacturers order these 3D printers, you know, to create parts that have less weight, which can lower costs. It can help with emissions, um, wind resistance, all those things. So this production scale has been considered the holy grail of 3D printing, um, you know, and now we have it possibly with desktop metal. Their customers include Ford, who's also an investor, BMW, Lockheed Martin, Georgia Pacific, Toyota, and the U.S. Army. So also attached to this deal, along with Chamath, was J.B. Straubel, who's now an investor in the company. He was the first chief technology officer at Tesla, and he's also an investor in QuantumScape, symbol QS, the battery company that is now the best performing SPAC of the year. Revenue for desktop metal was $26 million last year, but the CEO told Forbes that they actually see that total going to $1 billion in the next five years. That manufacturing 3D printer market is expected to grow from $12 billion in 2019 to $146 billion by 2030. So again, awesome customers from this company. They have Chamath and JB Strouble attached now on the investor team. Um, this is one I've liked. I didn't get in on that run up. But disclosure, I bought on the dip yesterday. Um, I think we're going to you know, see a return once we see some of these uh, pricing volumes kind of take hold. Um, so I believe in the long-term story of this company. I own shares. Make sure you're doing your own research, so That's not advice to buy shares yourself. Um, but, you know, desktop metal is one worth checking out. Yeah, you know, one of the things, like always, guys, is that what we're trying to do is get you the information so that you guys can find and make informed trades. Um, at the end of the day, there's so much information that needs to be put out on these SPACs, so definitely stay with us, guys. We're going to be doing this every single day, and you can't find a show out there like this, guys. So like always, I uh, w- want to go ahead and start getting into some of the stocks in the chat. So go ahead and go ahead and put your tickers in the chat. Let's go ahead and get into our favorite favorite time of the day guys this is the ticket time all right guys so i'm going to go ahead and look for stocks in the chat i'll definitely be looking in there so definitely put your put your tickets in the chat right now uh, one of the things i would definitely want to take a look at is, is some of the, the the potential new ones before i get into one of the tickets in the chat i want to give out a, a, a shout out to the one that i'm looking for i, I think Chris can't hear me push this one enough. <laughs> uh, he's heard me talk about this one often. Uh, S-E-A-H. And the reason why, guys, is is that $10 pricing, guys. I, I like to pay attention to those. I've been trying to find some that I want to get in. So uh, I definitely want to take a look at this one. Let's look at this chart. This is Sports Entertainment. S-E-A-H here. Um, this is what I'm seeing. Look how it's just hanging out here in the 980s, 970s, and right below 10. Uh, You guys always hear me talk about my uh, kind of pattern that I look for. I look for an above move 10 and then sideways hold above that 10. So one of the things that we look for is candles, right? Candles have wicks and they have down wicks and they could have a body, right? So what I look for is the body to close above 10. Because wicks, you know, they're, they're just kind of like the extremes in the day, in the intraday. And so one of the things that I'm looking for is can this one get above 10, 
like it did right here, but actually close above the next day. You see how this one went above 10 here? The very next day it comes down all the way to like 992 and then closes somewhere in this 996 area. So you guys, I'm just trying to point out the pattern that I always see, which is I'm trying to get it above that 10 and then that sideways move. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and let's get into some of the tickers in the chat. Uh, Chris, I know you've probably seen some of those. Any Anyone you want to touch specifically early here? Oh, man, I've seen so many tickers today. Uh, this chat is lively today. Um, it's on fire. I see on the screen right now, uh, Leap L-E-A-P. This is one I've been watching for some rumors. Um, they have a strong team attached. They've been kind of toy or uh, uh, rumored with um, – like Coinbase, SoFi, some of those uh, fintech names. Um, so that's one I'll be taking a look at. We're going to do another rumor show, guys. Um, if you're new to this, go back, watch the old videos. We did one on November 30th where we talked about seven rumors. So those were seven rumored SPAC deals. So three of those seven have now announced deals. And we have another one, uh, Quell, Q-E-L-L, that's jumping double digits today, where that deal might be announced soon. So you definitely want to pay attention to some of these rumors, because as you saw, when these deals are announced, um, you know, people immediately, you know, normally get into those names because, you know, they don't want to miss out. So you want to pay attention to rumors anytime you see, you know, some hard evidence, though, not just, you know, a couple of tweets about a name. So um, we'll be doing a show about that. I, I love your SEAH one, Mitch, um, you know, below $10. That's another show we're going to do for you guys. SPACs trading between 10 and 11 because, you know, there's some added value there. Um, yeah. So uh, what else do you see? Do you see in the chat? Or I'm seeing, yeah. uh, I saw someone say M MP. I know uh, that's one of the ones we've talked about a lot on here. Uh, MP materials uh, looks like that one's moving five percent again today. Um, what else do you see in the chat there, Mitch? All right, guys. So one of the things I'm seeing in the chat here, and I and I think I heard my dog scream this one out. Um, so uh, definitely gonna take a look at it here. Um, so one of the things that I I noticed, and and this is uh, let, let's go to one that we mentioned. Um, it, I have a AI. Um, so let, let's let's pull that one up. Um, I know this one's a, a, a new IPO. So one of the things we do on this show is not just about SPACs. We also take a look at IPOs, relatively new or something that we can find a story to, so that we can bring it to you guys and make that informed trade. All right. So uh, C3 AI. I think one of the coolest ticker names for sure uh, with that AI. W what do you know about this one, Chris? Yeah, so this was one uh, we talked about yesterday. Um, you know, I was a little surprised that it did trade as high just because it did go um, head to head with some of those other big IPOs um, that were announced. But they have uh, uh, deals in place um, with like Microsoft, Amazon, uh, IBM, where uh, customers can work, you know, over top of those platforms. Uh, they originally priced shares at $42, started trading at 100 We see it well over there now. Um, an enterprise artificial intelligence company and that symbol AI, like what a cool symbol, what a cool business, you know, model enterprise artificial intelligence, um, addressable markets, $271 billion. It looks like they're a leader, you know, in that industry and 86% of their revenue uh, comes from subscriptions. So again, we talk recurring revenue all the time that builds in your revenue, it kind of guarantees and it makes it easier to forecast future revenue. So that's something I like about this company is that recurring revenue there. Um, so this is one worth people, uh, you know, keeping on their watch list, checking out as we kind of see, you know, can it maintain the triple digits there in its first couple days of trading? Yeah, so one of the things we really like to do is recognize the new faces in our show. So we got a new face here, Brandy. Brandy bringing a stock here, Ajax, one that we haven't brought up to it. This is why we're here, guys, is because we're going to miss them. I mean, we can't see them all, but if you guys help us out and let us know in the comments and what you guys want coverage of, I can guarantee you my man Chris is going to do the research and we'll go ahead and bring you the stories.
All right, so let's take a look here at Ajax. Ajax, I'm pulling up the chart here. Um, I, I can see this kind of making a move from that $10 point. Um, it really didn't even look back. I mean, it, there's there's not many of these that do this, but like if you look here in November, um, this kind of when it opened up, it, it didn't look back, guys. I, I don't see many charts like this where it doesn't at least dip a little bit underneath 10, but this is just a, a kind of a straight move up. So one of the things I definitely uh, recommend on this one is be careful for pool X. Um, when a stock goes straight up, you know, eventually it's going to get too far extended and do a pullback. Where is that going to happen? When's that going to happen? We don't really have anything to go off of like history. So it's, it's really, it's going to be really hard to judge, but definitely I, I appreciate you bringing it to the chat. I mean, that that's what this show is really all about, guys, is you guys bringing the facts that you guys want information and coverage on. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get into another one here. Um, seeing some talk. L let's get into CCIV here. Trey, Trey, we see you. New face, new face. Let's go. Smash the like. All right, so what do you know about this one? CCIV, Chris. Yeah, so CCIV is one of the Michael Klein um, SPACs. Uh, we've heard Kevin O'Leary talk about how he likes, you know, investing in the horse and the jockey with these SPACs. He mentioned Michael Klein ones. Uh, so this one was on our rumor show. It's been announced they're in the running uh, final bids for Direct TV um, that AT and T owns a stake in. Looks like valued at fifteen billion dollars. This was one of the rather large. SPACs, and it looks like they might be taking a chance on a direct TV. Uh, I don't know, just me, in my opinion, I, I don't love a deal here for direct TV. Um, you know, the television market, the streaming market, you know, it's, it's highly competitive right now. You know, I, I see the shift, you know, with people, you know, going to like Fubo that we've talked about and other options and, you know, uh, cutting the cord, adding, you know, Disney Plus, Hulu, Netflix, all that stuff. So I don't know if I love, you know, a name that's attached to a rumor with DirecTV here, um, but you do have it below $10. So you do have some value there, you know, below the net asset value. Yeah, you know, one of the things that we definitely look for is uh, an opportunity that you can get these below nine. Um, and this one actually going a lot lower than, than many. Uh, uh, I'm seeing this one hit all the way down towards uh, kind of this 960 area. And this could be about what kind of Chris mentioned, um, kind of some worries of what they're going to be buying into. Um, and I think that's why you might have seen this move towards the 960. Uh, but one of the things I, it is getting me interested was a big spike, volume spike, guys. Uh, you guys. You guys hear me talk about it always. I'm looking for volume. Because volume moves stock. Because at the end of the day, that means shares are being traded. And when the float can be rotated, or let's say you, you're getting a big buy, you know that's when you're going to get a lift. That's when you're going to see stocks move and get momentum. So w with that volume here being said, that was a uh, 7.6 million shares traded there. So what I want to see now is when it pulls back, if it pulls back, can we get another big volume bar? I always look for big volume bars to kind of create the momentum, but usually it also brings in a little bit of a pullback looking for another buyer to really get that underneath momentum. Um, so I'll keep an eye on this one. Great mention here. Uh, let's go ahead and get into another one here in the chat. I know we've talked about this one. I'm super excited because we're going to get the CEO on soon enough. Uh, Rush Street, D-Y-M, D-Y, uh, D D M Y T. Sorry about the struggle there. Uh, you guys can see me, but Chris, what's going on with this one? Yeah, D M Y T. Rush Street. You know, this is this is sports betting and iGaming. gaming. This is one I like here. Um, we've talked about a lot on the show. They're the number one online sports betting company in the state of Illinois. They did have a head start there, um, so they are seeing some market share losses to DraftKings, but as that market evolves, they're the leader there. They're also the number one iGaming company in the nation. This is a huge brand. They're growing as more states legalize. Um, I like the SPAC, and I like the team behind it. So the they've brought DMYT, and then they also have DMYD, which is bringing Genius Sports Public, which we talked about a couple days ago. And then the same person behind these two SPACs is also the chairman of Blue Mobile, one of the leading uh, mobile games companies that's publicly traded. Uh, we're going to have the CEO 
uh, of those companies on the show here uh, in a couple of weeks, hopefully, as long as everything lines up. So we'd love to get more insight, you know, into the the, the thoughts of, uh, you know, these companies going public. But I really like Rush Street Interactive in the long t- term. Uh, and I think, you know, as sports betting grows, this is one of the names that, you know, could really gain in market share and be a leader. All right, guys. So I'm seeing one more mention here. So thank you. Definitely, Lenard there. Appreciate you bringing that one to the chat here. Um, So I'm seeing one more I like uh, that's been getting a lot of kind of attention to. I think IGAC. Let me me find it here in the chat. So many tickets going up. I love it. I love it, guys. Keep it going. Keep it going. I love it. All right. So there it is. IGAC here by Nathan. Let's let's take a look at this chart here. All right, so what do you know about this one, Chris? Yeah, so IGAC is another uh, SPAC that's looking at the uh, gaming industry. Um, the lunch hour show with uh, Jason Raznick and Luke had a guest on yesterday, um, who you know kind of looks at the valuation of those sports betting and iGaming companies. And this was a SPAC he mentioned, uh, you know, based on its share price. Uh, being able to get units, you know, below net asset value. This was one he liked. Um, I'll add, you know, yeah, the leaders there, uh, venture capitalists who helped invest in FanDuel. Uh, one of their leaders was involved with uh, uh, Genting, which has two gaming properties in New York. So there's definitely some leadership there that has gaming experience and they are targeting, uh, you know, the gaming and hospitality market. So uh, based on the share price, that's one I'll be taking a, taking a look at here. Yeah, definitely. You know, one of the things I'm seeing on that chart is it's popped over $10. So what would I be doing, guys? Looking for that sideways move because that's what I want to see. I want to see the volume collect. I want to see that sideways move. And then I want to see it close above that $10 to let me know, hey, maybe the bulls have gotten in. All right, guys. So definitely go ahead and get into the rest of the show for today. Um Fubu, Fubu's not a spec, yeah, but it switched <laughs> over. It switched over. The, the, Mark, Mark, we're, we're not just specs. We do, we do IPOs too, and that that was an IPO. That was an uplisting. That's that's Mitch's baby there. You're talking about. So we love yeah. talking about Fubo on here. Yeah, you know, one of the things is, you know, you know, Fubu is not a spec, but uh, you know, one of the things is we did mention this one on pre market prep down by the eleven dollar price point. Look at that chart, guys. Look at that breakout from from the 14. So, you know, one of the things is we're going to bring you guys the stocks that we have stories in. And that's really what we're all about, guys. We're not just all about just only SPACs. We're going to get you some IPOs. We're going to get you some stories. And that's really what we're trying to do, guys, is at the end of the day, get you guys to have some information to make some informed trades on. So like always, guys, definitely smash the like. Hit the bell down below so that you can be notified when we go live. And let your friends know if they're interested in SPACs, this is the best back show in the world guys so definitely we'll see you guys next time chris anything else you want to leave us off with yeah hey guys thanks for a great show saw lots of new faces lots of interaction in the chat we love it we love seeing the regular faces as well i do have a teaser announcement for you guys on monday we will have another ceo interview so we're bringing the leader of romeo power that's the company going public with the spac RMG. He will be on the show Monday. So we will be diving into electric vehicles, batteries, and talking all things SPAC with him. Uh, So thanks everyone for tuning in. If you have not already turned that thumbs up blue, smash the like button and be sure to subscribe. And while you're already on this channel, keep keep it going. Uh, Luke and Raz will be back on around 1210 for the lunch show. And then at 340, we do have the uh, the closing show as well. Uh, So stay tuned to Benzinga for all things SPACs and stock market. And like always, before we get on out of here, if you want your free two-week trial of Benzinga Pro, go ahead and look in the description below. You don't even need a credit card, guys. So definitely check it out, guys. And like always, if you want to profit and get that real-time news,